Hello and welcome to part 3 of the Angry Birds series. Today I'll show you how to zoom in and out and also move side to side with the arrow keys and also the scroll wheel. If you started with the first tutorial, you'll have already downloaded the default project. So if you go to third person input and actions, you'll already have a pan left, pan right, zoom in and zoom out. And in the IMC default, it'll already be set up. So the zoom in is the W, mouse wheel up and the up key and then so forth with the corresponding ones. So you can do WSD or use the arrows, or you can use the mouse to zoom in and out. The next thing we're gonna wanna do is click on the slingshot and do Control B. You can also just go to the blueprints folder and then find the slingshot BP. And we're gonna be doing everything inside of here. First, I'm just going to comment stuff just to organize it. So on the input touch, I'm just going to select all of this and then press C and then type input touch and then show bubble when zoomed. Then add pigs, and then event tick, and then action mapping, and then event begin play. All right, now we can start working on the controls. So I'm gonna come up here and find some space, and I just wanna bring in all of the controls. So first, I'm gonna right click and then type in AI zoom, and I'm gonna do zoom in, then I'll type in AI zoom again, and then I'll get zoom out. And then I'll also get IA pan, and then pan left, and then IA pan, and then pan right. And I'll put the pan left over here and the pan right over here. And I'll do zoom out on the top and zoom in on the bottom. So just like this. Next, I want to get the spring arm. So I'll just drag this into here. And then I'll set the target arm length. And then I'll plug it into triggered. And then off of the input, I'm going to get a clamp float. And we're going to do this so that we can limit where we can move the camera around to. Then off of the value, I want to type in plus and get an add. And then off of the spring arm, I want to get target arm length, and then I'll plug this into the top, and then I'll add that by 50. And the minimum, I want to be 1000, and the max to be 2500. So what this is doing is once I press the zoom out button, it'll start adding a value to the target arm length. So right here, it's adding 50 to it, but it's not gonna let it go anywhere from in between these values. And what these numbers are doing is it's changing the spring arm length. So if we go to spring arm and then we go to target arm length, it's going between 1000 and 2500. So 1000 moves it all the way up there and 2500 moves it back. So if we add numbers, it's going to move back. And if we minus, then it's going to go forward. I'll just keep that at the default at 1298. So if I go back in, I can copy this and then paste it and plug it in to the zoom out. And then the only thing that I'm going to change in here is I'm going to type in minus to get a subtract and then control and drag that into there, type in 50 and then delete this. So now if we click play, I can zoom in and out. And I can do it with the mouse wheel or the arrow keys or the W and S. And it's basically gonna be the same thing for panning from right to left. All right, so for pan left, what we're gonna wanna do is get the spring arm again. And then this time we want to set the socket offset and we'll plug that into triggered. And then on here, we'll right click and split structure. Then off the Y, I want to get another clamp and we'll do a clamp float and we'll do minus 800 and 1000. So the minimum will be minus 800 and maximum will be 1000. And then off the value, I'm just going to subtract and the bottom value will be 50. And then off the spring arm again, we'll get the socket offset and then right click and split the structure and we want to get the Y. So it's basically the same thing over here. We're just setting a different thing. We're setting the socket offset. So if we go into the spring arm, you'll see there's the socket offset here. And if I switch this back and forth, it goes from right to left. And it's just clamping between minus 800 and 1000. And then the only thing we need to do is copy this and paste that. And so we'll just plug that in and we could switch this to a plus or we can just add a minus to it and then that'll just cancel it out. So now I can go from right to left, forward and backward, and I'm basically just trapped inside of an invisible square and I can go anywhere inside of it. And if you wanna make it faster or slow it down, the higher the number, the faster it'll go and the lower the number, the slower it will go because the more it adds, the faster it will be to get across to each side. And then I'll just select all of this hit C to comment, and call this pan slash zoom. All right, that's going to be the end of the series. If you want to learn how to make UI like pause menus and also main menus, 
and options menus and things like that. There'll be a link in the description for my tutorial series and the first part of it is making main menus and all of the widgets. So make sure to go check that out if you want to make your game look even better. And also don't forget if you want this landscape material with the trees and foliage and grass and all the things that come with it, you can click the link down below to get that and there's documentation on how to use it and set it up. It matches the stylized look of Angry Birds. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching and I hope you guys found this series helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.